Good morning, and welcome to Breakfast with the Bible. Happy New Year. Um, I hope your holidays were safe and enjoyable. Um, so whether or not you uh, make resolutions for the new year, um, I hope that this year brings you spiritual growth, more dependence on God, and a peace that passes all understanding. Uh, that being said, um, I did add a link to the description. Um, it's about a book that came out yesterday. It's by a guy named Carl Clausen. Uh, he's a radio host for Moody Radio in, in Chicago. Um, the book was published by Moody Publishers. Uh, I have no affiliation with them whatsoever, but the, the title is fitting for, I think, the new year. It's called The Seven Resolutions, uh, Where Self-Help Ends and God's Power Begins. Um, I'm a fan of the guy. He's a great host, a uh, good man of God. Um, so, like I said, I, I, hope, I think with the new year beginning, it was a, it was a fitting title to include. So... Um, check it out. Um, you can get it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, various booksellers. Um, so I spent some time pondering how I would start um, this new year, uh, what topics I would use, um, where I would begin. Um, so I made a list actually just before the Christmas holiday uh, to try to get prepared. And I decided that uh, simply call this one Back to Basics. I think starting right at the at the foundation of it is is a good place um and then we'll see where where this new year takes us um so what do you see when you enter a church okay a plethora of musical instruments a platform primarily referred to as a stage um, flashing lights all around uh, the best sound systems money can buy chairs that are so comfortable you wish you had them in your living room um i mean just just electronics as far as the eye can see tv screens that would make the professional sports uh arena shameful i mean they would just love it i mean it's it's these screens are huge you know but my question is why what's what's the point what does it do okay what is what is the what is the reason for it why do we spend so much money and effort on the superficial okay that's that's kind of where i'm going to begin so um, I'm going to read from Matthew, uh, well, yeah, I'm going to read from Matthew, but in Matthew chapter 5 to 7 is, is what we refer to as the Sermon on the Mount. It's, it's Jesus' most, I'm going to use the word, uh, famous teaching, I guess you could say. Um, he covers a whole list of things, parables and whatnot. Um, Jesus spoke and the people listened. Listened. That's all, that's all there was. There was people they were, they were sitting in the grass, sitting in the ground. Jesus was up on a mount, which is basically like a glorified hill. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's probably just for the acoustics so, the, so his voice could travel. Um, but that was it. There was no, no lights, no sound systems, no drama, no skits, just Jesus and his word. Okay, And, and listen to the, the two last verses of chapter 7, verses 28 and 29. So then it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. That is, that is an amazing response simply because Jesus spoke. After, the, after he was done speaking, they were amazed because just his teaching was as if he had authority. And of course, we know he did. But look at Luke 4.32. It says this. It says, and there were astonished, and they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. Now this is referring to the same teaching. This is just Luke's version of it. But they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. Okay. Again, he didn't have any extras. Okay. He didn't have a team of people, you know, riling up the crowd. They 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 listened to what he had to say, and they were astonished at it. Okay. John 7, 46 reads like this. It says, never man spake like this man. Okay, they knew there was something different. The way he spoke, the way he, he brought forth his message, his teaching, there was, there was something about it that, that just was powerful. Okay, again, he had, he had no extras. Okay, this was Jesus himself and, and an audience, uh, a, a mass of people who, who were just driven to, to hear what he had to say. Okay, the truth of the gospel has not changed. Okay, the power of the gospel has not changed. And certainly the need for the gospel has not changed. Okay, look around, look everywhere. 
and you can tell that the need for the gospel is still there. Okay, so we're going to take a look at Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 1 to 6. Okay, it says this. It says, And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding, upon the first day of the seventh month. And he read therein for the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday. Okay, from the morning until midday. That's, that's a long time. Okay, before the men and the women and those that could understand and the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. Again, this is this is physically he wasn't he was he was kind of in a position like Jesus was kind of raised up so his voice would carry. And when he opened it, all the people stood up and Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered, Amen, Amen, with lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. That's it. Ezra, God's word, and nothing else. Okay? And the people were soaking it up. Okay? That's all they wanted. Okay? And then they stood or they sat. They were there from morning till midday. There's those, those are hours. Okay? We spend 25 minutes in church and we're... we're, we're fidgeting, you know, looking at her watches, trying to figure out what time we got to go home to eat, okay? It's, this is the way it should be, okay? And they stood, they, they, the way they respected God's word when it was read was, was they, they, they bowed. I mean, they were, they lifted up their hands. They, they worshiped the Lord simply for his words, okay? They wanted the word of God, okay? They were hungry sheep, okay? First Corinthians chapter 2, 1 to 4 says this, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. It was simple, okay? Paul came and gave his message simply. Okay, he didn't, he didn't add all the flair. He didn't add all the extras, okay? All, all I want to do is, is, is Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's, that's it, okay? I want to give you the gospel simply, okay? That's what's, that was Paul's heart, okay? He didn't need, he says it right there at the end. He says, demonstration of the spirit and the power. The gospel has power without your help, okay? Without you adding all this extra nonsense to it. Okay, so let's look at this, okay? If, if we have to put on a show and a big production in order to captivate an audience, we have only admitted that we do not trust the power of the message on its own to keep them attentive. The, in Nehemiah, the people were attentive unto the reading of the word. They, he didn't need anything else, Okay. If, if we've got to add all this stuff so people can, can and we can fill the seats and people can come and listen, they're not here to, 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 to do that. They're here to hear God's word. Okay, we don't, we don't need a production. We don't need a concert. Okay, we don't need a, a theatrical performance to keep us interested. If we're, if we're hungry for God's word, the gospel is all we need. Okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that you don't need, you don't, it's not helpful to have music. You know, they're singing all through through Scripture, but the emphasis we put on the superficial part of our services is 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 in the end is going to be detrimental. Okay, it needs to come back to basics. It needs to come back to the gospel simply preached. Okay, I, I'm again. This is this isn't an umbrella statement that, that that covers every every church across the globe, but. If you're listening to me, you, you understand what I'm talking about, okay? Carl Vaders wrote in Christianity Today, When we reduce the gathering of God's people to an entertainment venue, we don't enhance it, we diminish it. He went on to say, Never undermine the truth of the gospel for a better Sunday morning show. Okay? That should convict a whole bunch of us, okay? Now let's look at Acts chapter 2, verses 21 to 47. I'm not going to read them all, okay? But... You can, you can turn there if you get a chance. 
Okay, verse 21 says this. It says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay, this is Peter. Okay, and then Peter goes on from verse 22 to 36 to prove that Jesus is both God and Messiah by Christ's miracles, his resurrection, and the sending of the Holy Spirit. Okay, but, but look at verse 37. It says, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the disciples, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Okay, the, the message that, that Peter gave stirred them up, okay? They needed, they needed an answer. What, what are we supposed to do now? I mean, th th we're astonished, again, by your words. What, what should we do? Peter continues and calls them to repent and be baptized. It's, it's that, that's the simple message, okay? There's, there's a lot of theological teaching outside of the gospel, but the, the point is the gospel message is where we start, Okay? Go down to verse 41, okay? It says, Then they, they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls, okay? Again, Peter spoke, the people listened, they were attentive, they were pricked in their hearts, and they said, what are we supposed to do now? This is, you can't just leave me, we, we gotta know what to do next. This is amazing news, we have to be able to, to, to move on from here. And, and they, and, and, Peter says, repent, be baptized. And they were like, this is, this is it. They did it, and 3,000 people were saved. How often do we see that nowadays? We see a bunch of people who get excited for a good show and go home the same way as when they showed up. Okay? This, something needs to change. Okay? Jesus said, if you love me, feed my sheep. Sheep don't need to be entertained Sheep need to be led. Okay, sheep are stupid. Okay, listen to one of Ken Davis as he's a Christian comedian has a great stand up on on sheep and, and sheep in the in the Bible and stuff and it's 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 full of truth and and wisdom and and teaching and it's hilarious but it's true. Okay, the Bible refers to us as sheep constantly. Okay, for good reason. Okay, it's time to get back to basics as I said before. It's time to get back to the message before the sheep are so deaf and blind that they they don't see the real light and hear his voice. Okay, the, you're gonna you're gonna blind them by all your flashing lights and deaf them by all your noise, and and they're gonna be so distracted that they're not gonna hear God or see Him anywhere. Okay, I'm, I'm not saying God is empowered to go through that stuff to break through that to be beyond that, but why why all the extra? Why all the the, the flair? Okay, look anywhere, and, and again, this is an umbrella statement, but look anywhere in church media, and, and you see this, this performance that even Hollywood, you know, should be envious of, okay? Now, the message used to bring us conviction, okay? It used to leave the people sensing their need for Jesus, okay, their, their need for redemption, Okay, we need to hear a call to repentance, not a motivational speaker making you feel good about the state you're in. Okay, these I, I struggle with this session because I try to avoid anything that could be misunderstood as a rant. Okay, but my burden is that the church has lost the point. Okay, again, this is this is not entirely. This is not you know exclusive okay this is you know various places but but generally speaking okay the, it's it's lost the simplicity of the preaching of the message okay now obviously again i'm not making this a blanket statement for the church as whole as a whole but it's out there okay and and matthew 28 19 is what we call the great commission okay jesus says go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Okay, Mark 16, 15 says this. He says, And he said unto the eleven, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That was it. Okay, he did not say go entertain, go put on a show, go amaze them with sounds and lights. He says preach the gospel. That's it. Okay. It's, it's become so busy. Okay. When did we decide the message on its own wasn't good enough, okay? When did we stop believing in the power of the gospel to stand by itself, okay? I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not an NFL 
sports fan. I'm not a sports fan at all by, by any stretch of the imagination. But this time of year is when people start discussing the Super Bowl and, and those kinds of things. But what do you hear most when it's over? Okay, the game, I, I don't. The plays, not really. Uh, the teams, maybe for a little bit. But, but what do you hear primarily after, after it's all over? The commercials, the halftime show. How hilarious were those commercials? How, how amazing was that halftime show? Or, you know, in the past, how, how floppy, how messed up was that halftime show? But it's, that's what they talk about. It was the entertainment part of it, okay? The game is now overshadowed by superficiality of entertainment. And the church is doing the same thing. The message, the power, the truth, the gospel is now just filler in the middle of a show, okay? Now, I considered not saying what I'm about to say, but I don't think I would feel right if I left it out, okay? The Christian church in America, not exclusively, but in generalization, in my opinion, and this may sound strange, may not be worthy of persecution like we see globally. I said it, okay? I fear the churches today, and again, this is generally speaking, lack the capacity to be such a threat to the enemy that he would even have to do much to devour it, okay? The devil has infiltrated the churches of the world, but, but in my opinion, America specifically, okay? This is, again, the same tactic that he's used since, since the beginning, okay? If, if he can convince us that the gospel has lost its power, then we, for the sake of keeping churches filled, will add whatever our imagination can conjure up to do it. And, and, and the enemy is, is cheering, okay? Erwin Lutzer once said, he said, if the devil isn't bothering you, then you're probably not bothering him, okay? I think that is so true, okay? If, if life is peachy, if you're, if you're a real Christian and life is peachy, then there's something, I'm not saying you can't have a good life as, as being a Christian, I'm saying, but, but Jesus himself, promised persecution and, and trouble and all these different things. If, if you don't get attacked once in a while, some, some, some inner uh, reflection is, is needed, okay? Persecution happens when believers refuse to sway, okay? When they believe as Paul, who said, woe to me if I preach not the gospel, okay? The Western churches overall continue to operate because they don't pose a threat to the work of the enemy. On the contrary, they may even be helping him along. Okay, Again, I'm not bashing anybody, but I'm trying to get us to look at the, the truth of the way things are right now. Okay, This world is, is a mess, and our churches need to stand up and, and be who we're called to be as a, as a body, Okay, not as, as, a, as a world... Entertainer, okay? Pastor Jack Hibbs said once, he said that he doesn't believe revival is going to come as a large movement. And I'm paraphrasing, but not like a, like a big movement, you know, a group of people, but it's going to happen in individual believers, okay? The revival is going to happen individually, okay? And, and it's going to be believers who refuse to be shaken and keep their, and keep their eyes on God, okay? It, it, we're not worried about everything, okay? It's when they stay focused on Christ, okay? Again, it's time to get back to basics. We need to stop seeing congregations as an audience who come to be entertained and start seeing them as sheep who are hungry for the truth and in need of a Savior. And when we get back to the message, the true gospel message, those who only came for entertainment will either be transformed or they'll move on. But we cannot compromise the gospel in order to fill seats, Okay? Paul said in Romans 1.16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone that believes. Okay? Paul was not ashamed. He didn't have to dress it up. He didn't have to add flair. He knew the gospel could stand on its own because it's the power of God unto salvation. Charles Spurgeon is believed to have said this. He says, Scripture is like a lion. Who ever heard of defending a lion? Just turn it loose and it'll defend itself. Okay? He also says, within suitable bounds, recreation is necessary and profitable, but, but it never was the business of the Christian church to supply the world with amusements. Okay? 
I want to leave you with, with one last group of, of verses, okay? It's in Matthew chapter 6, okay? Matthew 6, 2 says, Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets. They may, be, they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward, okay? Matthew 6, 5. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Matthew 6, 7. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. And Matthew 6, 16. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. So I'm going to end you, I'm going to end with this question. Okay? When you're in church, ask yourself, who's in the forefront? Is it the music? Is it the minister? Is it is it the show? Is it is it the just the, the, the decorations and, and all the all the extras? Or is the center of it the gospel? Is it the message? Is it, is it the hope of Jesus Christ unto salvation? If it's not, something needs to change. Okay, Christ should always be the center of attention. From cover to cover, Scripture shows us Christ. Okay, if, if we're not doing that primarily in the church, if we're, if we're spending all of our budget and all of our imagination and ideas on how to draw more people in with these superficial things, you're going to end up with superficial believers who, who don't have any faith. Okay? They're going to be entertained, they're going to leave, and, and life is going to go on as it was before. Okay? The gospel message needs to be first. Christ needs to be the main thing, okay? The, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. You've heard that before, okay? The gospel message should always be the most important thing we do in our church services, okay? Again, I'm not saying we can't have lights, music, and these various things, but so much emphasis is put on it. I mean, again, you got screens as big as the building, you got you got so-called preachers and ministers and pastors putting on performances. I mean, I'm not going to go naming anybody, but you, you go to I mean, look online at any kind of uh, streaming church service, and you've got you've got pastors rapping and, and dancing. I, I'm not saying these things can't be a way to share the gospel with people who who like that kind of music or or are drawn to that kind of atmosphere but don't do it in the sanction don't do it in church okay give them the message simply okay christ needs when you're doing that you're 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 making yourself the the star of the show Christ needs to be the star of the show. And there shouldn't be a show, okay? Preach the gospel, and that's it. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else will be added, okay? The Bible, the Bible says that everything you need has been given you in Scripture, okay? I believe it's in First or Second Peter, I can't remember. But think about it, okay? It's time to get back to basics. Okay, it's time to lay the foundation, Christ Jesus, salvation, and then we can build upon that. You can you can do your theological studies from that point. But adding all this extra stuff is not is not doing anybody any good. It may you may make them feel good. You may get their adrenaline going and they they have this sensation of something being something happening. But you can go to any show, any movie that you want to see, 
and get the same kind of response, same kind of feeling, you know? You get goosebumps when you see a, a good moment in a movie or, or, or you go to a concert, okay? The church was never designed to be that kind of thing. We weren't here to, to, to entertain a world and make them feel good about themselves, okay? The gospel needs to be, you know, it says it pricked their hearts. Are you, are you as a minister, are you pricking their hearts? Or, or are you making them feel comfortable? Okay. Are they convicted? Is the Holy Spirit working in your church? Okay. Uh, again, I struggled with this one because, uh, again, it, it felt to me like a rant. But I, I really wanted to put it out there for the, for the first part of this year. Because looking around this world, things are just messed up. And, and I think the church needs to and it, it, this you know what this may be a a filtering process it may be a a wheat and chaff kind of thing okay the the real biblically founded churches and and, and believers are going to are going to stand up and, and become stronger and those who are false and and i don't know wimpy <laughs> are going to are going to lose or, or figure out where they're where they should be um, I think it's time for churches for men of God uh, men specifically to to stand up to be the model to be uh, as Tony Evans would say kingdom men uh, I think it's important I think it starts with the men it you know we all fail we've I've failed several times and I still continue to fail but it's the grace of God that, that allows us to continue. And again, uh, I, I want us to think about where we need to be. Okay, I think that, that the gospel needs to be the main thing. Okay, um, I thank you for listening. I thank you for, for taking your time out to, to hear what I have to say. Um, Again, look at look at those 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 passages, Nehemiah for sure, um, chapter eight. It's a great. I, I love it because because the reading of the word should should do that for us. We should be in awe of it when it's read. Okay. Um, again, thank you. God bless you. Um, stay tuned for for what we have next. Thank you.